Yo, what's going on guys? Doug Sensor Martin here. Hope you guys are having a great day and I just want to talk to you guys and just give you guys some updates on my life and what's been going on and obviously there's some really big news that I need to share with you guys that involves competitive Call of Duty and for all of you guys out there who follow me for other stuff from Call of Duty, I'll make this extremely simple for you. There are 12 professional teams in the Call of Duty League, which means that there's 48 players total. Last season, there was 12 teams with 60 players, but we went back to four versus four and the league did not expand to more expansion pro teams. So that means that 12 pro players got cut from their jobs. I was a substitute in the league last year, not able to play the game at all throughout the higher season. So going into this season, there was no chance of me being a professional starting player because I couldn't play the game last year. I ended up getting onto the number one team in challengers at the end of the season without having any practice. And they dropped me before the final tournament, which I didn't really mind too much because I had no practice on the game and they were very upfront. So I really appreciated that about triumph. But moving into this year in this game, my team was me, Zed, Dens and Aches and then Aches just decided to leave us one day without saying anything and I shot him a text and I was like listen Pat if you don't want to play with our team you can just tell us like we'll move on and we'll be okay and he still hasn't texted me back from that day it's been about a month now so uh, Pat if you're watching this uh, just shoot me a text back man just just acknowledge it or like give it a thumbs up or something man um but we picked up Goonjar to replace him we went into the first tournament. We were supposed to be the number four seed. And this tournament was a major tournament, guys. Uh, this was two weekends ago. I think it's only for $500 for first place. It's not a lot of money, but the points in the seeding for the season is very important going into the, the entire year. And having a good seed in the first tournament is huge. We were supposed to be the number four seed, but game battles had a glitch and they did not count our teammate Zed's pro points. So it moved us all the way down to the number 17 seed. And we had a tougher bracket and we got upset by a team that just played better than us, honestly. And um, we finished top 32 in the tournament, which by my standards is unacceptable. I'm sure by Zed, Dens, and Goon standards is clearly unacceptable as well. We expect to not only be number one, but at least be in the top eight, uh, which is where we expect to be, especially because Zed and Dens were some of those pro players who got cut going into this season. They were one of those 12 players. So these guys are great players and they just couldn't get on a starting roster. So we would assume that with us putting in the work, we're going to be a great team. We didn't perform the way that we expected to. We revamped our practice. One of the biggest problems that we had was that our teammate Gunjar had a broken controller for the entire game. He couldn't throw any stuns or grenades or trophies, and it was definitely messing with his psyche. He ended up getting a new controller the Friday before our last tournament, which was on Saturday, and we did not drop a map in all of the scrims we played, and we ended up playing the number two team in Challengers, who was the number two seed. We beat them in every single map, so going into the tournament, we're feeling really good, but because our seed was so bad because of game battles glitch and us getting upsetted, we were the 32nd seed in the tournament, which means that we play the number one seed for top 16, which just so happens to be a team called Wester who was beating everybody. They beat all these pro teams. They beat Dallas Empire, who won champs. They barely lost to FaZe. They won the first Challengers tournament. They ended up winning this one as well. So they went back to back and they beat everybody. So we were one of those teams that they beat. And I didn't really think too much into it. I thought, well... Our team looks a lot better now. Gunjar's controller was holding him back. He's now being the player that he can and should be. And our team's looking great. We look amazing in practice. I think we're going to keep the same roster moving forward to our three-week break that we have Matt, now. Um, but unfortunately, Zed and Dens just basically got together and thought that Jared would be a better fit for the team than me. And they never really gave me a reason. And they never even told me about it, which is what I think bothered me the most about the situation. I'm okay with getting dropped. It's only happened to me once in my career out of 10 years of playing, which was last year in MW. And it was because I didn't even get to practice the game. But this time around with challengers and teams being able to free flow and do what they want, I expected to either get dropped or get sketched on or sketch on somebody or drop somebody because there's no contracts and teams can make changes all the time. And it happens a lot in this challengers league. But I didn't expect them to just do it behind my back and not tell me, you know, like I could handle it if somebody messages me or calls me and says, Doug, I want to move forward with this guy and go in a different direction and wish you the best of luck. I wouldn't really be too upset. But the fact that they did that behind my back and then they swindled Goonjar away from me because he was my duo and we were a team of two, but there's not a lot of options. So he decided to just stay with those guys instead. They really just gave him an ultimatum to play with them. And um, that's basically the roster they're going to be moving forward with. So that's really what bothered me the most about the situation. It definitely motivates me. It definitely makes me look forward to playing against them as the competitor that I am. And I still don't know why they wanted to move forward with Jared. I'm assuming it's because they don't like the way that I speak. And I wanted to get into that. And I wanted to have a conversation about this, guys. I'm friends with a lot of players in the pro league, friends with some of the players on the top in the pro league. I'm friends with some NFL athletes, NBA athletes, MLB athletes. I know some great players in all sports, gaming and real world sports. 
And I've also been a part of football teams and basketball teams in real life. And I've also been a part of championship teams in Call of Duty. And if you want to be the best in your craft and what you do, you're not going to be the best of friends all the time. And you're definitely not going to be nice to your teammates all the time. Coaches get on players. Players get on players. They get in arguments. And I felt that with the team that I had, not once did I receive any criticism. And I thought I was playing incredible. Uh, if you look back, the, the VODs don't lie. I, I felt like I played amazing in all of our tournaments and our practice. And I felt very confident in my gameplay. Um, but I, I'm not a perfect player and I have a lot to learn and a lot to improve on. Not once did the team I just played with ever critique something I did or said what I could have done better or said that I made a stupid play. They never critiqued me and it was a red flag to me. So I try to be nice, but then when I started to see problems and things that could have been doing better and issues that we've done, I would clip and be like, yo, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Like, why are you not holding this? And I'd start getting frustrated. And I think they didn't like the fact that I was talking in a nasty way towards them. And it definitely was a turnoff for them. But the way I look at it, guys, I don't want to be a part of a team that's just going to be laughing and being friends with each other all the time. I want to be a part of a team that could put me in my place and tell me when I'm messing up and tell me how I could get better. Just look back. And the problem that I have with all of these stereotypes, because I feel like they always go against me here, when karma completely just screamed at me back in Call of Duty Ghosts, screaming at me, cursing at me, telling what I'm messing up on. Everyone laughs at me and jokes on me and says that I suck and agrees with karma. But then when I'm going to criticize the players I'm teaming with and it's on a live stream, all of the replies, the comments on Twitter, on Twitch, everywhere that I look is I'm bringing vibes down. I'm a nasty guy. I'm a bad teammate. When all I'm looking for is the best out of my players. If I don't believe in Zed, Denz, and Gunjar as players, I'm not going to want to play with them or even waste my time because I wouldn't waste my time with players I don't believe in. I believe in these guys and I truly thought we could have been a good team. But anytime I try to critique them, they wouldn't speak back to me. And then Gunjar would take the battle for them and speak for them. And they're grown men who have their own way of thinking. And I'd want to talk to them about the problem. If I have an issue with them, I don't want Gunjar to talk to me about their problem. So that was a major red flag to me. The fact that I would give criticism and the only thing I would hear back is, don't say it this way. Say it in a nicer way. And when you're in the heat of a moment in practice and you're trying to get better... It's just not possible. It's not something that I'm capable of doing. And that's not something I'm, I'm willing to change. I mean, I could be nice to my teammates and I could have a lot of fun. And I'm the first guy to guess my teammates up when they're doing something great. I'm also going to be the first guy to point out a mistake and a problem because I want to be the best. And I don't think that I even am as nasty as some other guys. I mean, some of these guys at the top who have won the most are some of the nastiest players. I've dealt with them personally with Saints, with Aches, with Slasher with Parasite, with Karma. Like these guys are some great, amazing world champion players. All of them have won a world championship. All of them are highly successful. They have screamed at me, yelled at me, degraded me, embarrassed me. I mean, it's all over YouTube. Just type in Karma Rose Sensor. I've been embarrassed publicly and people laugh at me for it. But then when I'm trying to do that same thing and it's coming from a place of, I want you to be the best because I want our team to be the best. I think that's where the issue is. And I've tried to have multiple conversations behind closed doors and it always just ended with a happy compromise. And that's not a culture I'm looking to be around. I have nothing against Zed and Dens as people. I do have a problem with them going behind my back and not telling me that they don't want to play with me, but I don't have anything against them as people. And I wish them luck with their success. But the way I want to run a team and the way that I want to be involved in a system, whether I'm a captain or just a player, I want everyone on the team to be hungry and motivated to win, which I think Zed and Deads and Gunjar are. But I think the thing that they lacked was that they, they were not able to handle criticism if it was given to them in a negative way. And they also weren't able to give criticism out. Like I wanted to be yelled at. I wanted to be screamed at. I wanted people to tell me what I'm messing up on. And that never was a problem. That never was a thing. So if that's never a thing, that means your game is perfect, but it's not. We weren't playing well. We weren't placing well. So I think the change makes sense and I don't have a problem with it. It's okay to get dropped. There's a lot of free agents. A lot of players are either dropped or teams just disbanded. And there's a three-week break going into the next tournament. So I'm just really looking forward to whoever I'm playing with, guys. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for the support in the stream yesterday. It really means so much to me. I'm looking to be number one. And look, I want to make my teammates my best friends. I don't want to make my best friends my teammates, man. I don't care who you are, what your background is, how old you are, the type of person that you are. I don't care what you do with your time outside of the game. But if you're in the game, and you're practicing, I want you to be giving it 110% and I want you to be telling me where I'm messing up and I want you to be telling me when other players are messing up and talking as a team and singling 
out mistakes. You can't have general broad conversations saying we need to do that better. We need to do this better. No, like censor. You need to do this. You can't do that. You got to hold this lane. Censor. Stop getting turned on. I don't know. I just want people to tell me how it is. And that's the system that challenges me to be the best that I can be. So any players out there watching this right now, if you want to be the best in the world, you have to be meticulous. You have to be persistent. You have to be hardworking. You have to be talented and you have to be able to take criticism. I look back at my career and one of the best things I've ever had in my career was a guy named Brian Zeliasco, aka Apathy. And if you guys look back at our careers, you saw how hard we were on each other. Every single day, I challenge Apathy to be the best player that he could be. And sometimes I even cross the line. I never crossed the line with Zed Denzer Gunjar, and they couldn't take that. But with Apathy, I crossed the line many times. He was able to handle it. And Apathy was one of those guys that will be my best friend forever. And I, I think if he, you ever ask him, he'll say the same about me too. Anytime it went to an important tournament, anytime we had to win, Apathy was the first guy making the play. And it was so inspiring to me to see the type of stuff he would be doing in the game. And it motivated and it pushed me to be a better player. And that's why I think when Apathy and I went to three grand finals at the highest level, we won all of them and we never lost because I would look at him in the eyes and I would say, Brian, we got this far and we can't get second place. We need to win. And then he would look at me and be like, yes, dog. And I'd be like, Brian, no, you don't get it. We have to win. It's not a choice. It has to happen. There is no second place. It has to be number one. Okay? We have to be number one. And then I would make the plays. And then I'd look at him and say, look what I'm doing. Your turn now. And then he would do it. And then the team would do it. And that's the way that I like to be with a team. That's the way that I look at the game. So I have no way of showing that other than just being the person that I am. And I don't apologize for being the person that I am. If I do cross the line, I'll apologize. Um, but with these guys, I just thought that the whole system and team always wanted to be so happy with each other. And that's just not thats just not a winning formula in my books. I think a winning formula is being hard on each other, being critical of each other, um, and not crossing the line all the time. But sometimes it's important to, and it's important to reset each other and keep each other accountable. So... Um, I wish them the best of luck, honestly. I just wish that they could have been more straightforward with me and just say, Doug, we just don't want to play with you. We want to go play with Jared. So I'm really looking forward to playing against that team. I'm expecting a lot of changes to happen in this challenger system, guys. I have three weeks to find a team now going into the next tournament. I think I've been playing incredible. If you guys have been watching my journey on Twitch, I feel like every tournament, every scrim, I've been playing incredible. Every Everything I've been doing, I feel very confident in my game. And I'm just really eager to continue learning and continue to be a better player. So if you guys want to follow my journey live, we have the scouting series coming up. I think FaZe might draft me tomorrow, so FaZe Sensor might make a return for a day. If you guys want to tune in, just twitch.tv slash sensor. And also, guys, I am officially sponsored by G Fuel again. If you guys want to save any money on G Fuel, use code sensor. I'll have a 30% off code going from Thursday of this week until Monday. So if you guys use code sensor between Thursday and Monday, you'll save 30% on G Fuel. I'll have links in the description below. Um, comment down below what you guys think. If you've been watching this journey, I want to hear what your opinions are on this. I really want to hear your opinions on the bad vibes toxic teammate thing because I think there's levels to being a toxic teammate. I think I'm not the nicest guy. I definitely think that I am more on the toxic side as a teammate, but I also think that I don't cross the line. Um, and I also think that I know how to get the most out of my teammates and my players. And I also know what to expect in return from them. And I felt like with this team, they never wanted to give true, real criticism to each other. And I don't think that that's a proper formula in order to be successful and to grow and to be the best. I think you need to have thick skin. And I think that you have to be able to take things on the chin. I've been completely embarrassed and humiliated by aches and, and parasite and karma and slasher, um, you know, and mutation back in the day. And I just took it on the chin every time. And I just wanted to prove them wrong. Honestly, it was a huge motivation to me when I teamed with Damon and he was yelling at me and cursing at me. I, he said, we're strictly teammates and that's it. I said, okay, Damon. Okay, sounds good. So I went into that tournament, not playing against the other team. I was playing against Damon on my team. And I said, this guy thinks he's on his high horse because he's a world champion. And he's one of the best players. Screw this guy. I'm better than him and I'm going to show him why. And that motivated me when I teamed with him to win a championship with him. And then after we won, we looked at each other. We smiled. We gave each other a hug. And then he went on to Optic. I stayed on phase and I won again and uh, he won again. And we all had some great careers and uh, I have a lot of respect for him. And I think that's the way it should be. So Comment down below what you guys think. I'll be live right now if you guys want to tune in and have more of an open conversation. Thank you guys for all the love. I'm sorry for being inactive on YouTube. This this Call of Duty stuff, I'm trying to balance that as best of my ability. And uh, I think Face Sensor is going to make an appearance tomorrow. So if you guys are excited for our competitive Call of Duty journey, please leave a like on the video. Again, comment down below. I really want to talk to you guys about this. And I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. It's been your boy, Doug Sensor Martin. And I'm out, guys. Peace.